In this video, I am going to talk about YOLO World, a new variation of YOLO that can detect new objects without the need of retraining. So a couple of days ago, I came across this video, which is a demo of YOLO World. And as you can see, it can detect the eyes and the ears and the nose of the dog pretty well. And the interesting thing about it is that it was not particularly trained on these specific objects. So I became pretty interested in it and I found their Git page. And as you can see here, they have a website and in their website, they have a paper which talks more and explains more about the architecture of YOLO world and how it works. So I am going to go through some parts of their paper and uh, talk about some of the interesting uh, parts of it. As, as you can see, in this figure, the first figure of this paper, they show their difference with the previous methods that do the same kind of task. As you can see, it's like 20 times faster in comparison with the previous methods. So in the beginning of the paper, they explain that the YOLO world follows the standard YOLO architecture and leverages the pre-trained clip text encoder to encode the input texts. So what is a text encoder? Basically, a text encoder is a module that can translate the text into the language of computers. It can turn the text into zero and ones so the machines can understand it. And then it says, we further propose a reparameterizable, that's a difficult world, vision language path aggregation network, rep VL pan to connect text features and image features for better visual semantic representation. Okay, if you find uh, this language a little bit too academic, don't worry, I will later on go through the architecture and, and talk about it more. So then they talk about their main contributions and they summarize it into three folds. We introduce the YOLO world, a cutting edge open vocabulary object detector with high efficiency for real world applications we propose a re-parameterizable vision language pan to connect vision and language features and an open vocabulary region text contrastive pre-training scheme for YOLO world. The proposed YOLO world pre-trained on large-scale datasets demonstrates strong zero-shot performance and achieves 35.4 average precision on Elvis with 52 frames per second. So zero-shot means the model didn't see that image before or that object before and it can detect it by just seeing it for the first time. That's the meaning of zero-shot. And 52 frames per second is a pretty good in terms of speed. Okay, so in this figure, you can see the three different uh, kinds of object detectors. So traditionally, like YOLO version 3 to 8, uh, and also YOLO NAS, which was released last year, uh, they have a fixed set of, you know, uh, labels, for example, a cat, a dog, and a person. And the model is trained on those three labels and those uh, three categories with thousands of images and then they can detect those three labels and if you want to add something else for example the category of fruits including banana apple and orange then you have to provide thousands of images of those categories that's the traditional way that object detectors used to work and then the previous open vocabularies um, were introduced that were pretty large and heavy and um, they could detect more set of objects but they were like very heavy to run and the main difference that YOLO world brings is about the lightweight detector so it is using YOLO which is not that heavy and you can just run it on your own laptop if it's not a very old laptop and then there is an offline vocabulary set which user can uh, define and then it can detect those objects. If still you're feeling confused, don't worry. I will, once I go through the architecture down here, I think you'll better understand it. So as you can see in the architecture, I'm going to say my own understanding. If I make any mistakes, just let me know. But I'm more or less sure about how it works. 
Uh, first, it has the training on an online vocabulary. So this means the text encoder uh, learns how to deal with uh, different kinds of text and then uh, find the vocabulary embeddings, like, like finding the important words in a sentence. And once the training is, uh, is done, then the user can insert a prompt. For example, it can define the objects. For example, a man, a woman, a dog, and whatsoever. And according to that, it will send it to this vision language pen. At the same time, the input image is given to YOLO, the YOLO backbone, like the traditional YOLO architecture. And then it detects some of the features of the image. So here what it does is that it can detect, for example, some of the basic features like some of the edges and corners and so on, and then more abstract features like the eye of the dog, the mouth of the dog, the leg of the person, the person, the head of the person, and it will also send that to this vision language uh, pan. And then here the magic happens. So it makes a combination of these word embeddings and also the image features. And based on that, it will find the objects in the image. So here it will send these um, words and then it finds the region of the image which is related to that uh, word. So it finds a region uh, text matching. And at the same time, uh, the text contrastive head uh, finds the words that are more uh, related. And uh, this uh, module basically uh, detects whether a word is related to an image or it is not related. And then the box head, I think this is related to these bounding boxes of the image. And then using all of this information, it can detect the location of the object that the user uh, sent as an input, as a prompt. So that's why it is called open vocabulary, because uh, the user can insert whatever he or she wants. So down here, they also put some explanation about vision language uh, PAN. PAN stands for Path Aggregation Network. And then here uh, they explain how the text and image features are found and related to one another. Uh, you can see it here. I couldn't exactly understand uh, how these layers works, but uh, intuitively I can say that it finds the, you know, relationship between a text and also an image, you know, feature. And in the explanation, it says illustration of the rep of VL pan, the proposed adopts the text guided CSP layer for injecting language information into image features and the image pulling attention for enhancing image aware text embeddings. Okay, they did some experiments and here you can see uh, the specifications of the data sets that they used uh, for pre-training the YOLO world. Um, actually, they used many images with a lot of um, annotations, uh, but still, um, I think the performance is much better in comparison with the number of you know images that they use uh, for the training and uh, down here you can also see some you know interesting images here you can see the visualization results and um, these objects were not introduced to the model to the yolo model before but as you can see it can detect pretty well like the wheels of the skateboard and the shoe and the bench and everything. And it is pretty interesting. Uh, you know, if you wanted to train a model that does the same thing with the traditional methods, you had to prepare a lot of photos for each of these categories. And here you can see, you know, the magic of this new uh, algorithm. They also provide some other interesting uh, results. Uh, for example, here they were looking for men, women, boy and girl, and it can detect them pretty well. And um, this is also very interesting. It says visualization results on referring object detection. We explored the capability of the pre-trained YOLO world to detect objects with descriptive noun phrases. 
images are obtained from Coco Val 2017. So it says, for example, the tallest person, and then it can detect it, or the person with a white shirt, and it can detect it. Um, a person with a person in red. So not only you can define the object name, but you can also explain the object that you're looking for and it can detect it. That's amazing. Let's go to the GitHub repo. So here under Git, they have a YOLO world demo that you can try. So you just uh, drag and drop an image and then you uh, define whatever you want, whatever objects that you're looking for, and then it can uh, find it. Okay, so here I have a painting and uh, let's remove all of these classes and set man clothes um, sculpture and submit. As you can see, it could detect these men and also clothes and also the sculptures up here. Uh, what if I say man sitting? Oh, as you can see, it could find the ones that are sitting. I mean, this is amazing. Well, this one is not sitting, but overall, uh, this is this is interesting. Okay, what if I uh, increase the threshold. Let's see what happens. Okay, as I'm increasing the threshold, then it only shows the ones that uh, the model is pretty sure about them. It also detects like this whole crowd as men sitting. Uh, well, that's not accurate, but in these cases, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. Okay, they also have um, a Google Colab demo that uh, you can test. It's here. I already have it open here and I installed, um, I cloned the Git and I also installed the dependencies. Uh, let's just restart it. And then we need to download the pre-trained models and also the image for detection. And um, down here, we're going to run the model. It'll take a while, so you need to be a little bit patient. Here it shows some information about the model and the checkpoints and stuff. And here it has um, a range of categories and then it also has the class name two and then class name one. I think it is only using the class names, not the class names two. So, okay, first run it. First run this one and then run this. As you can see, it could detect the dog and the backpack and the person. It is writing the the object, you know, category, not the label itself. It's just a number. Uh, but what if I change this to two and change this to to class name? So if I just want to see the dog, eye, tongue, ear, and leash. Uh, let's run it again. Um, it is not working. So let's run this part again as well. Maybe we have to reload the model and um, then we run class names and then run it on an image. Okay, this time, as you can see, it only detect the ear, the tongue, the dog, the leash, I mean, this is amazing the way it works. I I think in a year, the whole object detection models are going to be drastically different. So this was just an introduction to YOLO world. Hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. If you're interested to know more about this object detection module, or if you want any particular you know, kind of tutorial that you can use it, for example, on videos or anything, just let me know in the comments and I will make that video tutorial for you. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.